carpet going all the way up the ceilings and you know mirrors and all that stuff. I, I thought for certain that he was trying to hit on me and after a while I thought hey this isn't so bad. But then all of a sudden Lisa walks in, uh, Lisa Solis that is. I said, hey Lupe, who's the cunt? I thought we were hitting it off. And, uh, never mind. Lupe also has this way of coming across as like he's superior to other people. Um, but, but he's not, as uh, Professor Maranumpa reminded me, Lupe Solis, he's not Dakota. So, <laughs> that was funny before. Um, <laughs> you know, Pete, Peter Jung is the, the editor of Virgil Moss now, Ryan no longer is. And uh, he's been working on a book for a long time. Uh, he told me about it last year uh, called Letters to Wenger. And this is true. <laughs> and uh, uh, we, we got a reply in the Virgil Moss mailbag. Pete, uh, today, and it, um, it's great because, you know, it's written on notebook paper, so you know it's personalized. It says, Dear Mr. Jung, we would like to thank you for your recent submission to Penitentiary Press. Although you, although you are an extremely talented writer, we only accept submissions from people who have been previously convicted of a Class A felony and are currently serving time at a state prison. Though it is well known that many a dangerous ruffian have served time in the Lyon County Jail, <laughs> we feel your work would be best received if released to a local publisher who specializes in regional books. Sincerely, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Did I forget somebody? Oh. Elaine, yeah, yes. I thought that I'd let um, Elaine speak for herself. <laughs> So goddamn loud, I can hear him all the way from my office. 
Well, I guess lately I've had to stand just outside the Whitman room to hear what he was saying. <laughs> the point is, Ryan needs to learn the importance of the old axiom, speak softly and carry a big stick. That is what Teddy Roosevelt said, and I knew Teddy Roosevelt. I had coffee with Teddy Roosevelt. I navigated South American jungles with Teddy Roosevelt, and Ryan Moore is no Teddy Roosevelt. I'm not entirely contemptuous of Ryan. He is a student, after all, and that is why I'm here, to give all that I have to the students. <laughs> I have even been known to feature Ryan's work on my office door, illuminated with quotes from very prestigious theorists. theorists. If, I had some, if I had to sum up Ryan more for you in one sentence, it would be this. The kid pisses me off. Do what you want with him. That is all I have to tell you, except for this one thing. If any of you boys from UTEP ever make it here to Southwest State, be sure to keep your goddamn hands off of my Diet Pepsi. And it, it's not signed, but I think we all know who it is.
Hello, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan's bathroom's okay. Sometimes it needs cleaning, though. I'm not really, uh, I've only watched a roast a couple times on, is it Comedy Central? Last time it was about Chevy Chase. Well, I'm not going to really make this a roast. I'm going to kind of make this a remembrance. Not that you're dying or anything. At least I don't think he is. Ryan. Let's see. We're both from Redwood Falls. He graduated in 1993 and went to St. Olaf. Is that right? 94. Went to St. Olaf. Went to Mankato State. That would be the first time that I really ever talked to him. He made, the, he made me my first Long Island iced tea. He didn't take advantage of me or anything. That was like the third or fourth time that he did that. And then he came to Southwest State. I loved all of his roommates. None of them were sick perverts that tried to make out with me. None of them were annoying and would talk to me about the stupidest things. All of his roommates were wonderful, weren't they, Ryan? Yes, they were. <laughs> and then there's those times that you just, you know, need some help with your homework. Ryan was always there. He was never on his caffeine highs. He was never too drunk to help you with his homework. He was always there, solid, going, yes, that's right. Not peeking in the bathroom. Or if he was peeking, it was probably because of the flu, not because of Bacardi Cokes or beer. Miller High. <laughs> Ryan, I really loved your roommate that you had last year. He was wonderful. He gave me self-esteem. Dan Woodall, remember him? Yeah, you left me alone with him. Thank you. <laughs> I should tell you guys what he did to me, but I'm not going to say anything, because Ryan knows and he feels bad. And then Ryan and his girlfriends, they were all wonderful. Good thing I never really wanted to date him. He told me he had all the hepatitis, so stay away from him. I don't even know where to go. I mean, Ryan's always been there like 8 o'clock in the morning. We're supposed to have breakfast. Has he ever made like, an appointment with any of you out there? And he's like, oh yeah, 8 o'clock, I'll be there. Calls you at 7.50. Party went a little too long last night. I'm sorry I can't meet you. I haven't seen him in two weeks. Ryan, I really love you. I don't really have much more to say because he's such a great person and he would always help with everything. Um, Ryan, I just want to know, what are you doing at 12 o'clock? Sex, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is anybody out in the audience who wants to, who's, who's ready? Melissa, are you ready? Sure. Okay, here comes Melissa. Melissa Stable. And, um, <laughs> Thank you. 
cold medicine. And, um, you know, sometimes you take cold medicine and you just get kind of stone cold. Like, you just, you just, you just start, I mean, it must be like a, occasionally, for me anyway, it depletes serotonin, like in a major way. Uh, I just was so terrible, terrible mood. I tried to drink a beer or two, just hoping I'd fall asleep. It didn't work, just got worse. And um, then they let the dogs out. <laughs> and um, the dogs weren't fun or anything. Not at all. 